Before I start this video, I just want to say that I'm not trying to be Keemstar, I'm not trying to be Content Cop, I'm not trying to be a drama channel. At first, I debated very heavily of whether I was even going to do a video on Rex Viper and their awful music videos, but they kept putting them out, and Justin's face kept annoying me, so I finally said, screw it, I'm going to make a video on it. In the comments section of that video, a lot of people were like, oh, Rex Viper just played live at this gaming convention and it was really bad. You should totally do a video on it. And I thought, damn it. Now I gotta watch this concert. Now I gotta do this video because it just wouldn't feel complete if I stopped at the music videos. So I did the live performance thing. Then in the comments section for the live performances, everyone's like, oh man, there's a lot of stuff going on with Cinemassacre with plagiarism and James Rolfe basically being owned by Screenwave and blah, 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 blah. So now this is the third installment in the Rex Viper slash Cinemassacre trilogy. Then I'm done. I'm going back to making my music content, uh, my tier list and all that stuff. So if you subscribe to my channel for that stuff, don't worry. Just, just push through this last video. Let the trolls have it. Do what they will with it, and, and we will move on. But until then... Stick around for my thoughts on the problematic gaming nerd. This is Dancing with Ghosts. Before I get into this, just as a little addendum to my previous Rex Viper videos, James and crew are completely oblivious to how bad their live show sounded. Dude, you guys sounded mm. awesome. You yeah. Guys, like, man, I had chills and I shit. Know. I was like, holy shit, you guys are yeah. like, you guys were the coolest dudes alive. <laughs> In that at that time, you you were the coolest guys on planet Earth. It was great. <laughs> I know everybody was saying the same thing. I remember when I like. Anyway, I just thought that was kind of hilarious that these people are clearly surrounded by a bunch of yes men and sycophants. Anyway, James Rolfe, aka Angry Video Game Nerd, been watching his channel since about 2013. He was the reason that I got into making YouTube videos. I think most people my age. Uh, it was either Doug Walker, the Nostalgia Critic, or James Rolfe that inspired thousands of YouTubers to start making videos. Doug Walker, by the way, has a nice little treasure trove of controversies of his own. I made some videos about that a few years ago. Anyway, I've been keeping up with the videos that other channels have been making on the downfall of Cinemassacre and the Cinemassacre Truth Reddit forums, and uh, it seems the general consensus is that the nerd started getting shitty sometime during or after his big movie that he released, The Angry Video Game Nerd Movie. I remember seeing the movie and not really taking it too seriously. Y you knew what you were getting with James Rolfe. His crude yet effective practical and digital effects worked for an online-based show, but on the big screen, it, it looked amateur. But it's fine, whatever. It was a dream of his, I never had an issue with the movie, and I was proud to purchase it when it came out. I also disagree with the notion that life can be broken down so simply as to say this one event was the thing that ruined Cinemassacre. Now, I feel like the downfall of Cinemassacre was death by a thousand cuts. It was a bunch of little things that happened over time that gradually turned the channel to a much more diminished version of its former self. It's like that experiment with a frog. If you put it in boiling water, it will immediately jump out. But if you set the frog in room temperature water and bring it to a boil slowly, the frog will stay in the pot and boil to death. Yeah, we were all the frogs in the Cinemassacre experiment. So in my head, I'm thinking, wait, James still puts out good videos when he's the nerd. Then I started scrolling through the annals of the videos on the Cinemasker YouTube page. And the first video that I got to that stood out to me as a truly great episode was the Earthbound review James did that came out three years ago. And yes, Screenwave was still involved in Cinemasker in 2018. And like I said... After that, it seemed like a bunch of little things started happening, like, here's a video of Mike Matei and this guy named Ryan that no one's ever heard of. Here's a video of James talking about movies, but then there's three other people who all look like they raided James's kitchen and ate all of his food. And these people are not just a one-off, like Ryan kind of sort of was. You never really see him on the channel anymore. No, no! These screenwave goons are showing up all the fucking time without even so much as an introduction of who they were and where they came from. 
Meanwhile, my subconscious is telling me that the angry video game nerd videos are getting worse, but I still loyally click on every new video that comes out, yet I'm enjoying them less and less. But my nostalgia for the good feelings his old videos gave me keeps compelling me to watch his new ones and lie to myself that they are just as entertaining as they used to be. So here's the bottom line. James is burnt the fuck out of doing video content. Hiring ScreenWave to do most of the work was the only logical choice in James's life. He made the nerd character as a fluke over 10 years ago. It became successful beyond his wildest dreams. It started paying his bills and he was all in. Then he got married, popped out a few crotch goblins, and now he's trying to transition into a different part of life. The only problem is this character that he created over 10 years ago keeps the lights on so he can't give it up. What else can he do? He even said as much. And most importantly, this is my day job. This is how I pay my bills and support my kids. You want me to quit? I'd rather be doing this job than something boring. Unfortunately, since he spent so many years establishing such high quality standards, taking the easy way out wasn't really an option without the fans noticing the quality drop. And notice they have. There is a growing number of people who have started forums dedicated to pointing out the quality shift. Videos are being made and longtime fans are unsubscribing. Careless mistakes are being made and James is finding himself having to make apology videos. Something he never had to worry about in the past. The first episode had a problem with the script. One of our writers had somehow added a portion that was taken from a pre-existing article. That's unacceptable and all of us here apologize for letting that sneak in. When you outsource your high standards to people who don't share your singular vision, this is the kind of shit that happens. People are so obsessed with James's content that they can even tell when he delivers a line that doesn't sound like something he would normally say. That's how he got caught for plagiarizing his very first Monster Madness video this year. But what we really learned was something much more interesting. So in order to bring it back, I had to get a lot of help to write the scripts from many different people. That still means I watched all the movies and wrote stuff myself. These were collaborative scripts. Some of the scripts I wrote completely. Some were half and half. Others, I would just write a small portion and then hand the rest off to somebody else to fill it out. So James admits that this is all a collaboration with these unknown slobs from ScreenWave. It's no longer the one-man show, but don't worry, James still has final approval over the scripts that he allegedly helps write. That is, until it gets him into hot water, then all of a sudden he has nothing to do with writing the scripts. So, my apologies, even though I'm not the one who did it. Even though I'm not the one who did it, it was me who trusted that person. So which is it? Are you involved in writing the scripts when it's a good video and not involved when plagiarism accusations come about? I was watching a video by this channel called Red Cow Arcade, and those guys were saying even the Pepsi Man episode was completely written by the Screenwave goons. Fucked up. I had no idea. And then I, uh, there was an AVGN that had come out soon after. It was about like a Pepsi Man PlayStation game, which already was like, does he play? Did he play PlayStation or anything after that? It, you know, any, any other like more modern systems? And and my friend was like, notice how um, like loosely it's edited. Like it's not tight the way like, you know, James tends to edit a little bit tight yeah so so that was when I, I was like oh this is like maybe he's decided that he wants to just outsource the whole channel and just you know be with his family and you know it's not the most preposterous idea which is you know like we know that at some point matt graining said all right guys take it away and i'll make the money you know like yeah it's they even said a line that i completely agree with and it was something to the extent of james rolf is like a senile old man now and the screen wave guys are just taking advantage of him you were like i think that these screen wave guys they're almost like self-aware caretakers to like a you know to like an old person yeah like know what's going on Somebody who's, yeah, like a, a, a son who's taking care of like a dementia-ridden father. And you're just 
draining them for resources. So that is my take on the Cinemasker situation. Does any of this really matter? No. Do I care that much? Not really. I just personally don't really enjoy Cinemasker's content as much as I used to. And uh, I kind of labeled the reasons why in this video. But if you still like it, that's fantastic. Uh, what you came here for was my opinion. And isn't that why you shop at the Dancing with Ghosts Emporium? I thought so. Uh, if you want, you can look at... Uh, there's a lot more in-depth downfall of Cinemasker videos out there. If you're into those downfall videos, which I know a lot of people are, uh, they go more in-depth about things like... Um, for instance, I didn't touch on the 540 thing with James Rolfe where he's like, I gotta go upstairs and my wife's gonna kill me at 540, right at 540, gotta go. Uh, I mean, the dude's got a family. It makes sense that they would have some kind of boundaries and schedule for when he needs to like not be in his basement playing video games. I didn't really touch on the whole um, Mike Matei cringy stuff like... Uh, the Elmo video and the Inspector Gadget thing and the 10 inch thing. But I mean, all that, dude, that, that stuff's been talked about for so long that um, it's just kind of uh, old hat at this point. Uh, I didn't go into James's whole, I don't got no time. I never have any time. And I um, spend my day managing all my cables and the technology and the taping the lights in the ceiling and all that just because, I don't know, it doesn't really explain like, really why why the uh, quality drop has happened. So anyway, um, yeah, like I said, plenty of videos out there for that stuff. But uh, thank you for watching this video. Thank you in advance for all the uh, hateful comments that I'm gonna be getting about uh, my physical appearance, uh, my age, my, my hair, obviously. Um, keep driving that engagement, folks. Anytime you leave a negative comment, it tells YouTube's algorithm that this video is important and it shows it to more people. So the trolls, as, as well as the people who genuinely like this stuff, uh, you're both helping just as much and you're not hurting my feelings at all. So by all means, keep commenting. Um, if you want to check out just my music stuff, I started a new YouTube channel that just has my music on there, my music videos, little extra tidbits that relate to my band. I will uh, post a link to that in the description and links to several other videos that I mentioned in this video. Um, go subscribe to that uh, Dancing with Ghosts music only channel because it's got zero subscribers as of right now because I just started it. But yeah, until next time, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, enjoy the rest of your night. Good night.